You're unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievable. Being able to understand and make graphs has always been a very vital part of any science subject. Today we're going to go out in the streets and ask people just how much they know about how to graph. First, I just want to ask, do you like to read? Yeah. Yeah? What kinds of things do you read? So, yeah, I read the news on, online. Uh, tacky romance novels? Sad okay. the news. Newspaper. The news? Okay, or... newspapers. News apps. Um, books. Books? What kind of books? I like all kinds. My favorite's Harry Potter. So. Have you ever read graphs before? Um, I read the words on a graph, if that's what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I okay. Have. Yes. I didn't yes. know when you call it reading a graph and look at it. What can you tell me about this graph? Uh, well, it says in 2007 how many, or the percentage of religions around the world. So this graph is showing the the percentage of different religions in the world. We have 21.01% of the world is Muslim. Um, Muslims are the most common. Okay, Muslims are the most common. Uh, and how do you know that? It's the biggest percentage in size and in percentage. Okay, so 21% of the world in 2007 was Muslim and 17 was Catholic. Okay. With, uh, <laughs> Catholics coming in at 16 percent. A second place with uh, Hindus coming in at third. At 13 percent. Other religions coming in at fourth and non-religious coming in at fifth. There's a lot of non-religious people, more than I thought, well, comparatively. Christ Catholics are pretty big too. I didn't know Jews were so little. Okay. And what type of graph is that? Do you know the name of it? Uh, it's a, I believe it's a pie graph. Pie chart. What kind of graph is this? Uh, bar graph? Bar graph. It's talking about the trash on the beach. I guess just a random beach and the type and the total amount. So on the side it talks about how much amount or the amount of trash and what trash it is. So this is showing us the trash on the beach and the different types of trash and about how much there is. Which has the most trash? Cigarettes. And how can you tell? It has the largest bar. Mm -hmm. So it shows us that there's more cigarettes, the most trash, the most, the, let's see, the most common type of trash on the beach is cigarettes, followed by styrofoam, then plastic, then paper, then wood, then metal, then glass, then cloth, then rubber, then other. Pie charts and bar graphs are just two examples of different graphs that you'll see this year, but they're not the most common type of graph to be used in science. Uh, the, the graph that's the most common that we really want to focus on is this next one. So this is showing the amount of ice cream eaten versus the temperature. The more, more ice cream is sold, the hotter it is. Okay. That's what it says. Uh, amount of ice cream eaten versus the temperature. Um, so the higher the temperature, it looks like the more ice cream is being eaten by people. This is the temperature and this is the amount of ice cream being eaten or amount of ice cream sold. And what is that relationship called? Oh man. Uh, take it away. Um, what kind of relationship? Yeah. Uh, um, is it like comparative or something? Okay, comparative know. relationship. All right, we can compare that. I'm not sure. That's okay. It's a correlation. Okay. Ooh, correlation. What does correlation mean? It means that the amount of ice cream is related to the temperature. And what kind of relationship is that? A, uh, a good one. Linear? A linear relationship, because it looks like a nice line. Yeah. And a, what else about the linear? Positive, negative. A like, positive correlation? Oh, a positive relationship. Okay, good. So another way of describing this relationship is that they are directly proportional. Directly proportional means that as one variable increases, the other increases as well. Uh, but we'll talk more about that later. What does independent and dependent mean? Uh, <laughs> independent and dependent. Uh huh. It means it stands on its own. Okay. If, if you were to say some kid's really independent, what does that mean about them? They, they do stuff by himself. They do stuff by himself. Yeah. 
And what does dependent mean? It depends. On? On the independent okay. variable. Okay, so which of these is independent, which is dependent? The temperature is independent and the amount of ice cream is dependent. In other words, the independent variable is the variable that you can control or change. The trick to remembering that is that the independent variable starts with the letter I, as in I can control it. The dependent variable, on the other hand, is the variable that changes based on how the independent variable changes. So that means that the dependent variable depends on the independent variable. Now this variable does change, but you can't change it. It will change on its own. Do you think you could make a graph? Yeah, I do. If I gave you a table with all the information you needed, you could put it up on the whiteboard and chart it out? Yeah, for sure. How do you know which kind you want to do? Because usually in elementary school, there's always time and distance on these types of graphs. Right. Okay. Why. <laughs> all right. All right. <laughs> so then you just do this, this, and this, you draw this point here, and it's the y axis. I just have to do that to remind myself. Oh, yeah, y, because you hike the y. There you go. That's what my teacher taught me. Hey, I, what it's a good summer, math teacher. okay? <laughs> I don't know, though. I'm going to look like an idiot. So all right, so why are you choosing right. distance to go on the bottom? Gut instinct. A gut instinct. I feel like time is usually on the bottom. Why, why, do, why do you think time is on the bottom? I just remember that it being like that. I can't remember. Because well, look, this is. Oh, I guess it doesn't really. Which of these variables do you think is the independent variable? Which one does its thing by itself? Time. So bottom. put it on it. There we go. Gosh. We're learning. So I told you. Um. So then you do. Oh, this is stressful. You know, Emily brought up a very valid point. Uh, a lot of people think that graphing is hard, uh, but if you just remember five simple steps, you'll get your graph right every single time. Step one, draw and label your axes. Your independent variable always goes on the horizontal or the bottom axis, and the dependent variable always goes on the vertical or the side axis. Don't forget to include the units in your variables. The next step is to scale your axes. You'll want to look at your data and determine how big your variable gets. Make the end of each axis approximately as big as your biggest data point for that variable. The third step is to plot points, or graph the data onto the graph. Fourth, you'll want to draw your best fit line. Now don't just connect the dots. You want to draw a single line that gets as close to as many dots as possible without that line becoming very wavy. In the red, you'll notice bad examples of graphs, and the blue is the good example of a graph. And finally, title your graph. It should be simple and short. The most common example is whatever the independent variable and dependent variable is, you just say the independent versus dependent. Those are the five steps. Have fun graphing. Are you missing anything? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's it, right? One more thing. Do we have to title it? Okay. So... Looks wonderful. One more small, tiny, tiny thing. What kind of distance is it, looking oh, at the yeah. data? Perfect. And the time is in. Oh, perfect graph. Best graph we've seen so far today. Between people as well. So you'll see beginnings of what? Anyway. Oh, 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 oh! Last blooper reel. <laughs> yeah, how about I hold that up? Oh, uh, yeah, good idea. <laughs> You can plan on having so, a blooper. No, uh, <laughs> that wasn't a plan, but I, I think we will now. <laughs>